Sam says she's a Christian and she's reading the Bible, but here she is at 3 a.m. in a club in Vegas. God's really cool. And it's an answered prayer that I know I'm walking in. And the first week, I cut out my Bible time. Like my heart was racing and I was having these like squeezing chest pain. Now we back, baby. We back. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things faith, lifestyle, and occasional travel vlog every now and then. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life. I can't believe I remember that whole spiel because it has been a month. It's been a little over a month since I made a podcast episode. Can you believe we're back? I'm so glad we're back. It's episode 24, and I took an unintentional break. We'll get into all that. Today is going to be kind of a sit down, check in, a ramble, if you will. If you are a a follower of my main channel, you know I like the rambles and I know you guys do too. So that's kind of what we're doing today. Just a little check in to say what's up, some things that I have been dealing with, some things that I maybe have struggled with a little bit, Um, my trip to Vegas I want to talk a little bit about, so all the good things. Uh, But before we get started, I want to remind you guys that all of my information is down below. This podcast is also available on Spotify. I get messages all the time that people listen on Spotify going on a walk or driving in the car, which is so cool because I listen to my favorite podcasters in the car or also on walks. So it's so cool to know that you guys do the same thing with this podcast. So all the information to Spotify, my Instagram, my TikTok, all the things are down below. And your support on each of those platforms means so much to me. If you wouldn't mind rating the show over on Spotify, if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it. Not going to tell you to give it five stars if you don't want to, if you feel so inclined. I love you for it, but I love you either way. Just kind of gives me an idea of what you guys are feeling about the podcast, what you're liking, what you're not liking, all of the things. So we're here. It is a Tuesday morning. Luna is also here. She is at my feet. I hope she comes up and says hi to you guys at some point so that you can see how big she is. I was just watching that video, if you guys have been here for, I think this was what, four or five months ago when I first got Luna. If you're not aware, she is my six, almost seventh month old Siberian kitten. But there is a video of her when I only had her for a week or two at that point, and I was trying to film a podcast and she was just making it impossible. And you can see her like climbing all over me. It's on my Instagram and my TikTok. She's just climbing all over me, like screaming at me. And she was like this tiny. And now she is a very big lady. So she's here. She's walking around. She's making filming a lot easier for me these days because she is maturing. Thank the Lord in heaven. So mama gets a little bit of a break when I film these videos. But yeah, how are you guys? I wish you could respond back to me. I'm doing well. Um, Let's see. Let's talk about how I took an unintentional month break, shall we? So I have a very, I try to keep it strict, a very strict filming schedule. I have two YouTube channels, as many of you guys know, as well as a full-time job outside of YouTube and content creation. And so I have a schedule where since I upload two videos a week on my main channel, I will alternate weeks. So one week will just be for my main channel and I'll film four videos in that one week. And then the next week I film just one podcast episode and I alternate. So every other week I make a podcast episode, every other week I make videos for my main channel. And my Vegas trip just kind of screwed that up because I was home for a partial part of the week and then the next week I was home for partial part of the week and it just it just kind of threw me off and time got away from me Um, and then I couldn't find my footing when I got home because everything you know when, when you're such a routine follower and then you're thrown off of your routine it's hard to kind of get back into your routine so that's kind of what happened to me and then I did film a vlog for this channel last week or two weekends ago or something Um, and I was like, okay, well, at least I can throw that up and have, have some content for them. Um, but I think there was a part of me that just started to get lazy and started to, um, well, we're going to get into it, but just kind of, I don't know, take a step back from 
I take a step back from my faith. But I guess this video topic I was procrastinating about because I, I want to talk about um, when the honeymoon phase that you have with God wears off. because That's a very real thing and I want to talk about it. So I think I was experiencing some of that as well as just procrastinating talking about it. And usually when you feel like, you know, like you should do something, but you really don't want to do it, that's usually when you really should do it. So I was like, you know what? I am going to film this episode. I know I'm procrastinating, but I'm going to do it at some point. And so here we are. We're doing it. So sorry for the break, but maybe it was a good thing. I don't know. Maybe every once in a while, you know, you get kind of close to burnout and maybe I just needed a little, a little refresher, a little change of scenery. We're going to talk about Vegas in a second. Um, and just a little break. And also gave me an excuse to make a vlog, which I don't always make. So that was nice. Vlogging, I always forget how much fun it is. But it is actually really fun. And you guys really seem to enjoy it. Because those videos usually do very well. So, yeah. Let's talk about Vegas real quick. I was in Vegas, uh, what, three weeks ago now? I was there from a Thursday to a Sunday. And I was there for a bachelorette party, one of my best friends from college. And I have been talking about it a lot leading up to the trip. And I will start by saying we had so much fun, like so, so many good memories with some really great friends were made. It is a trip that I will re remember for the rest of my life. We took so many nice pictures. We had so many nice meals. Um, the bride and groom, the groom was also there with his groomsmen. They... The, the bride and groom just felt so special and so loved. And so that, to me, is the point of a bachelor or bachelorette trip. So we were successful in that sense. Um, but leading up to it, I would talk to you guys about it. And some people picked up that maybe the Vegas trip was making me feel a little anxious. Um, or maybe I wasn't looking forward to it, which I felt really bad about that because I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to traveling with my friends, this group of friends I hadn't really traveled with for a long time. So I was looking forward to it in that aspect. But if you were one of those people that said, you seem a little anxious, like someone was even like, can you touch on this? Like, can you tell us what's going, like what's going on through your brain? If you were one of those people, you are partially correct. Yes, I did have anxiety surrounding this trip leading up to it while I was there and more so when I got home actually. Um, so let's talk about it. I have been very open with you guys about the fact that like I'm not a partier anymore. I don't really like I still drink socially. I don't hide that. Um, I love, especially in the, in the summer. I love White Claws by the pool. I love uh, a mojito. I love you know whatever. But I'm not a partier anymore and I don't drink to get drunk. I very much like stay within my limit. I'm a big girl. I'm a grown woman. I know what my limits are. The minute I kind of start to feel like, oh, if I have one more, I'm not going to be completely like sober minded. I'm not going to be in my right mind. I'm probably going to start saying and doing things that I wouldn't normally say or do if I wasn't drinking. And once I get to that point, I'm like, nope. And I stop. I've also learned, it took me 28, almost 28 years, I've learned to drink water in between drinks. Wow, it makes such a difference. When I was young and dumb, I didn't do that. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm very much not into the party scene anymore. So the first part of it was, oh, I'm going to Vegas and like, I'm going to be in clubs until two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, that's not really my thing anymore. Like maybe I'm not looking so forward to that aspect. But like, again, like I said before, in my opinion, if you're going on a bachelor bachelorette trip, like the trip is not about you. So and my friend and I that were like one of my friends that was there, we were talking about it and she's not a really big like clubber either anymore. Don't get me wrong. When, we, when I was young and I wasn't walking with God the way I am now and also I was just young and dumb. We've all been there like after college when I was 20, 21, 22, every Friday, Saturday night I was in a club or a bar like without fail with my friends every weekend without fail. So I'm not going to say I've never done it. It's just not my thing anymore for many reasons, as you guys know. So we were, we were talking about it, my friend and I, and we were, we were like, you know what? I would so much rather be in bed right now. At this point, it was like 2 a.m. We were in, in a club. Tiesto, the DJ, was playing, which was cool, by the way. I'm not going to lie. He was like right there and the music was good. 
Um, but it was like 2 a.m. We had had a long day already. Like my feet were bleed, like felt like they were bleeding. I was tired. I, you know, just wanted to like wash my face and go to bed. But we were like, you know what? This trip, like you kind of, you suck it up. You suck it up. And I was still there. I was, I was in the club. I was dancing with my friend. I was hyping her up. We were hyping her up. We were making her feel special and feel loved. And that's what she wanted to do. That's her idea of a good time. And so even though it's not my idea of a good time anymore, it's hers and it's her trip. So you suck it up and you do what you got to do. Doesn't mean I have to be slinging back shots because I wasn't. Um, but I can still be there and like be a good friend, you know? So that's what, that's what we were talking about. So that's what we did. And it was super successful. So that was the first part of it. But the bigger part, and this is the part that, um, I don't even know. I'm just going to talk about it. (laughs) The fact that I come on here, right? I have a platform. It's not the biggest platform in the world, not even close, but it is a platform. And I come on here and I talk about my faith and I talk about Jesus and I talk about, you know, the things I'm learning. I, I read the Bible on the internet, for goodness sakes. Um, you know, and so there was a part of me that was afraid of what you guys would think. And even some people at my new church, which I was completely wrong about that. And we'll get to that in a second. But I had anxiety about, wow, people are going to be like, Sam says she's a Christian and she's reading the Bible, but here she is at 3 a.m. in a club in Vegas. You know, what kind of hypocrite is that? Um... And so that made me very nervous. And part of the way that I would talk about Vegas leading up to the trip, I was trying to like cover my tracks and be like, you know, yeah, but like I'm not, I'm not like super excited about it because I didn't want people to, you know, and I was changing the way I was speaking because I was afraid the way, afraid of the way people would react, which I'm not proud of. And I need to stop doing that because I am who I am. You know, I was in Vegas. Yes. Was I drunk once on the trip? No. Did I touch a drug? No. Did I touch a man? No. (laughs) Like, you know, so I, it's all about knowing yourself. Everyone's convictions are different. You know, I, I don't have like an addictive personality. So I can be in a club. I can be around alcohol and just not drink it. You know, everybody's, everybody's different. If you have a past with alcohol and you don't drink it anymore and you're like completely sober, obviously that is not the place for you. But I know, I know myself, I know that I can go. I think the night we went to the the club and to see Tiesto I had a drink and a half the whole four hours that we were there because it wasn't about that for me um so it's just it really comes down to like your heart posture and at the end of the day I had to kind of tell myself like yeah I know you're anxious but it's your business and it's nobody else's if somebody judges they're judging for the wrong reasons because they don't know you you know the only person that you have to worry about is God and like sometimes yeah I, I like If it was a normal Saturday and my friends were just going to a club, would I go? No, it's just not the place for me. Um, But if it's a bachelorette, like it's an occasion, it's something to make my friend feel special, then yeah, I'm going to go and my heart posture is going to be the same as it always is. And, you know, that, that's, that's it. It's your, it's my business and God's business. It's nobody else's. So I had to kind of get that through, through my brain. Um... But I had a lot of anxiety, too, about all my new church community, which, by the way, July makes a year since I started going to this new church, which is crazy. And now I have such a group of amazing friends and and community um, to think that this time last year I was going to the church every Sunday by myself, not talking to anybody, feeling awkward to now I volunteer there every Sunday and I have an amazing group of friends. Like, it's just really cool. And God's really cool. And it's an answered prayer that I know I'm walking in. So that's really cool. But I had a lot of anxiety about the way that they were going to perceive me for no good reason. No, none of them. And if any of them are watching this, I was completely wrong. No one ever gave me the idea that they would judge me the whole year that I've been there. Um, at all actually they're like the opposite so I think this came from like past church hurt I do have a little bit of church hurt nothing extreme you know in comparison to some other people but I do have some things where I grew up in a church and I love this church I'm not saying bad about anybody that went there or saying anything bad about the church at all it has a very special place in my heart but I grew up seeing things where 
some things were done in secret. So, like, depending on what your stature was in the church, you could, like, you didn't want people to know that you would have wine with dinner because some people are just so against alcohol. And I've talked about this before, you know, if you if you read the Bible, you see that wine was very present. Jesus drank wine. Jesus made wine. You know, it's just, it's your heart posture. You can drink, like one of my biggest pet peeves is when people think that they can't drink without getting drunk. It's like, it doesn't have to be zero or a hundred. You can have a drink or two or three if that's it within your limit. And that's it. And you're done. You know what I mean? Like it's, it doesn't have to be either or. Anyway, I've talked about that before. We won't go down that rabbit hole. But I had seen that growing up where people would do things in secret. And I never, I don't want to be like that. I I mean, when I was younger, I was like that. Like when I was in college and I was being young and dumb, but still going to church. Like I was like that. I did everything in secret. Um, But I'm not like that now. Because again, my heart posture is different too. I don't even want to drink like that anymore. But I do drink and I don't hide it. Um, And so I, when I would be posting like Instagram stories while I was there, I was a little afraid that people would judge me for being there or think like, oh, Sam's in Vegas. She's probably drunk right now. Like, you know, like that's some way some people think. And so I was really nervous about that. And then when I got home and I posted on my personal Instagram, you know, a little Vegas photo dump um, and I wasn't posting anything bad, but you could see that like you could see that I was in a in a club. You could see that I was in Vegas. You could, you know, um, everything was tasteful that I posted, but still, you know, and people can make assumptions. And, uh, I had noticed, I think, unless I was making this up, I don't know, but I had noticed, or so I thought that I was like, oh, a lot of people liked my pictures, but not a lot of people from church liked these pictures. Like, oh, they're judging me. Oh, they're disappointed in me, you know? And I was, I was wrong. Cause when I showed up at church on Sunday, People were like, oh, how was Vegas? Oh, where'd you go? Oh, you were on a bachelor. Oh, how'd it go? How was it? Like, nobody was like being like, oh, Vegas, huh? Like, I'm sure you had fun. Because I, I know people growing up that would have, have said something along those lines. And nobody said that to me. And so I was wrong and I was passing on assumptions and um, I was nervous for no reason. So at the end of the day, it comes down to your heart posture. It comes down to the relationship that you have, and the understanding that you have between you and God. And so was I in Vegas? Yeah, but I stayed true to myself and doesn't mean that I was ignoring God. I actually brought my devotional with me. I was reading it on the plane. Um, so, you know, anyway, that's that's that. So yes, I was anxious about it, but I feel much better now and I'm proud of the way I handled everything. and that's that also i can hear that the house across the street their landscapers are here i have adjusted my microphone settings a little bit so hopefully that helps uh but i kind of have to finish filming this podcast now so i hope it's not too distracting but i do apologize for the background noise but okay so that was half of this video we're already almost 20 minutes into this episode um the other thing i want to talk about is something that i have been experiencing i have experienced it before when i was younger i have recently experienced it again and i know plenty of other people that have experienced the same thing and it is a very real thing that after a while your honeymoon phase with god starts to come to an end just like it would in a normal relationship where the honeymoon phase ends you know, you go from being so on fire about God, always like constantly reading your Bible, going to church four times a week, you know, um, wanting to talk to people about God and what he did in your life all the time. Like when you kind of can't help it, it just kind of comes out as word vomit, which is how this podcast started. And the other videos that I have made on my other channel, you just want to constantly talk about it. You're so passionate about it. And it is a very real thing that sometimes that starts to dwindle, that fire starts to fade. And I wish more people talked about it Um, because just like you would have to nurture a relationship, a marriage or else, you know, they always say like never stop dating. 
it's the same thing. You have to nurture your relationship with God. And sometimes you may not be as on fire as you are other times. So let's talk about it. Um, I want to reiterate, or not even reiterate, I want to say first and foremost that when I say this honeymoon phase ends, it does not mean that you stop loving God. It does not mean that you stop trusting God. It does not mean that, you know, all of a sudden you're doubting his existence. That's not what I'm talking about. That's a whole other topic of conversation. I'm just talking about when it becomes so part of your routine like you wake up every morning you read the bible you wake up every sunday you go to church like it becomes such a part of your routine that you're kind of just going through the motions but your heart posture is different and i was experiencing that i was still reading my bible every day but i would be reluctant to do it sometimes or i would want to just kind of get it over with so i can go on with the rest of my day i'm being so honest with you that starts to happen and i started like putting things before my quiet time like I would still do it but I was reluctant to do it my heart posture was different I wasn't doing it for the right reasons and now with my work schedule change I think I told you guys where now I go into work earlier and I leave earlier but I still want to get my quiet time you know bible prayer all that done before church before not before church before work also get my workout in before work and also take care of Luna and all like a bunch of things to do in now a shorter amount of time and so I started waking up like an hour and a half earlier and that does help but in the beginning I noticed that I was like oh I have so much to do today I gotta work out I gotta blow up my hair I gotta take care of Luna and then I gotta go to work and I'd be like all right I have to cut something out and the first week I cut out my bible time and I would say oh I'll just do it later I'll do it when I get home and then I would get home after a long day and I wouldn't do it because I was tired and I realized that I was like, of all things, I'm putting God last. I'm putting things before him. I'm putting, I'm basically saying my workout is more important than him. Or the video that I have to film is more important than him. And that's not God honoring. And I got, I felt really convicted about that. And I was like, woo. Because I, I grew up learning from youth group at a young age. And it's true that anything you put before God, it, you're, you're kind of treating it as like an idol. You're saying that it's more important than God. And I'm sure that makes God <laughs> really sad. And that makes me sad. So I felt conviction about that right away. And I stopped doing that. I was like, all right, I'm not going to cut out God. So if that means I have to wake up even earlier, then I wake up earlier. And so now I wake up at 7 a.m., which for me, that's early. The past three years, guys, because of my work schedule, I used to wake up at 9, 9.30. And now I wake up at 7. And that's how I get all my stuff done. So I know some of you are rolling your eyes at me, but 7 a.m. was early for me. Now it's just the norm, but it was early for me. Um, but yeah, there's just, it, it, start, it almost starts to feel like your prayer life starts to feel less powerful. Um, and especially if like you don't have a, like if, if your life is very peaceful at the moment, which is a blessing, but sometimes it feels like, oh, I don't really need to pray as much, you know, because it's very, it's very easy to pray when things are going wrong or when something, you know, when something bad is happening to you, you're like, God, help me. God, I need you. But we're not as quick to say, God, I need you even when nothing is wrong because we do. I need them all the time. I need them every day for everything. But it's hard to remember that sometimes as this honeymoon phase is kind of sizzling out, right? It's not as passionate. And I, I noticed too, I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but I noticed with me, and I've noticed this in years past too, that when summer comes around, there is just something in the air. There is something in the air. Temptation starts to creep in you know, everyone is by the pool. So there's a little more alcohol than normal. Like in the winter, like I barely drink. Cause like, where am I, where am I going really? You know what I mean? But in the summer you have barbecues and you have 4th of July and you have, I have my birthday and I have other people's birthdays. And you know, I don't know there's just something nice about having a white claw by the pool or a mojito by the pool. It just, you know, um, you're, you're dressing differently cause it's summer obviously, but there's I for me at least I feel like a more of an expectation for me to like look really good and maybe that changes the way I like pick out my clothes in the morning or 
you know, on a weekend when I'm meeting friends or like going out or whatever. Um, it's just, I don't know. There's just something in, there's something in the air. I don't know. And I really started to, to feel that on that topic. There's something I was going to talk to you about a little bit and I'm not going to get super personal with it, but, um, talking about summer and like getting more lenient with things, I noticed that I was even getting more lenient with my dating life. And it's because I wasn't as in tune with God as I used to be. I have always been known as the picky one for ye- for years. I mean, since college, I, for years, I was known as the picky one. And I, don't, I have no regrets about that. I think it's for a good reason. But I noticed that little things that I, I talked to God about that I prayed for in a spouse that I, you know, things that I'm believing for, I was getting lenient with it and being like, eh, it's fine. It's just one thing. But then one thing becomes two things, becomes three things. And all of a sudden you're overlooking all these things that you actually don't, you never wanted in the first place. And so, again, I'm not going to get too personal, but I was talking to this dude. I'm, by the way, I am no longer on any dating apps. I am off of all of them. They are deleted from my phone. Um, Not because I found a man. Um, but because they just were not serving me well and they were, I feel like making me a little more anxious and it just, it just wasn't working. And I want to talk about this in another episode more. So now I am open to dating in the wild and meeting people in the wild, which is actually really fun and exciting, scary, but exciting. Um, but the last person I talked to when I was still on hinge was a Christian and it was weird because his profile didn't like scream Christian, but when we matched, he was asking me, you know, about, oh, where do I, where do I go to church? And like, he, cause my, my page, you can tell that I'm a Christian. Like I, I have on there, like, or had on there, you know, like I, that I read the Bible. Like I'm very open about it. Cause I want you to know what you're getting into. Right. Um, but he was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm looking for a new church. Like, you know, I'm new to the area, whatever. And so I was like, wow, God, what? this is my husband because that's just that's always like the thought it's like god is this it um which it should i don't think it should be all the time but anyway i don't, don't want to talk about this too long but um we started talking and really talking about god and he was telling me his testimony and it was actually a beautiful testimony it was a very very beautiful person like i really enjoyed getting to know him and talk to him and we would facetime all the time and blah, blah, blah. not all the time we facetime twice but i only talked to him A week it was very quick he came and went really quick but my point is, is I was talking to this dude and there were a couple things that came up that I was overlooking like I love praise and worship music I love like elevation worship I love maverick I love all that and he was telling me like yeah I just I hate worship music and that's his business that's not my business but I was like overlooking that or just like little things that just would not work for me or that I don't relate with or that I don't agree with and I was being so lenient and I was being, I was being like, yeah, you know, cool. Like, that's your opinion. Like, I guess I could get down with that. Like in my mind, like I could get down with that. Like, you know, whatever. And it's amazing how God, everyone's different. God talks to me through my body. And I want to talk about this more at a later date, but like, for example, my last relationship, God was he just took my piece away and I think was trying to tell me like this is not for you because I had all those stomach issues where it was really anxiety that I was feeling but I kept going to the doctor thinking that something was wrong with me I spent hundreds of dollars for them to tell me that I had IBS or whatever and then that like the relationship ended and I was fine in this case I was having heart palpitations while I was talking to this dude okay I'm not exaggerating I had Like I was filled with so much anxiety and I didn't realize it because I don't get anxiety normally. It's only men that bring me anxiety from what I'm noticing. And I was like, my heart was racing and I was having these like squeezing chest pains and, you know, I have a history with fainting. So I'm thinking, oh, something might be wrong with my heart actually. And one morning I, I, I woke up and I was vacuuming, literally just vacuuming and my heart was racing. Like my Apple watch thought I was working out. And I remember I called my mom like almost in tears because I was like freaking out. And I went to urgent care and I got an EKG <laughs> and it all came back normal. But then I started talking to this dude like two days later because we just kind of came to the conclusion like, hey, this isn't, this isn't good. Finally, we got to the conclusion like, yeah, we're, we're just not for each other and that's okay. Um, 
Stop talking to him. I was fine. Like, I was perfectly fine. The heart, everything stopped, you know? So it's just wild. So listen to your body, people. I don't know if that's the same for everybody, but God talks to me through my body and it's wild. But um, that was something else that was like pulling me away from, from my quiet time or a thought I had. And this should be an indication for me of like, hey, this person's not for you. It's like I would think about my podcast and I'd be like, oh, I wonder if he would think the podcast is stupid. And then I would be like, ah, I don't really want to make podcast episodes now because I'm embarrassed. The right person would love that I'm doing this. You know what I mean? I was just, I was becoming so lenient and it was because I wasn't being as intimate with God because I didn't have that time because I was putting him to the side and I was letting all these temptations creep in. And let me tell you, this man that I was talking to like was beautiful, beautiful. And so I think that was also clouding my judgment, which I'm not proud of, I'm not proud of, but I'm not perfect. Um, anyway, so, and there were other things too. The last thing I'll point out that I think was pulling me away a little bit was, and I've talked about this too, I hate that Christianity is becoming a trend. I, I, some Christian influencers, um, not that they don't sit right with me. Like I, I respect all, like everyone who has a platform because who am I? I have a platform and I speak what I believe is true and maybe somebody would have problems with the way I say things. You know, who knows? Um, just because somebody has a platform doesn't mean that they're right, me included. You know, we all just come on here and we speak our mind. But some of the influencers just were not, I don't know. It was like cringy almost or it felt forced. And I was like, I don't want to fit into that bracket. Like I always want my podcast and maybe I just need to come on here and be more conversational rather than preach to you all the time. Like do a sit down like this where we just talk about what's going on, my thoughts and, and, and all the things. Um, but I just didn't want to fall into that category. I don't know. So I was really struggling with all that. And so that combined with Vegas and getting thrown off my schedule and, and all that, I think just forced me to take an unintentional break. But now we back, baby. We back. Um, so I had to kind of figure out, okay, well, how do I get back? How do I get back to be intimate with God? How do I, how do I fall back in love with God, essentially? And uh, I heard somebody at my church say this, which coincidental, probably not. Um, but she was saying, you know, or he, I don't even remember who said it, but they were saying when you... Oh, it was he. It was my main pastor. He was saying, when you feel like you're falling out of love with God, go back to the way you loved him in the beginning. Just like when you're nurturing a, a marriage and maybe you're trying to get that spark back. They're always like, oh, well, go where you went on your first date. Like, what did you do in the beginning that made you guys fall in love? Like, do that again. It's the same thing with God because it's a relationship. A relationship is a relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's romantic, whether it's a relationship with God. They all need nurturing. They all need work. They all take time and work. And so my pastor was saying, go back to the beginning. Where did you used to read your Bible? When did you used to read your Bible? Do that again. You know, what's your favorite book that spoke to you? Go back and read it again like it's the first time. You know, really nurture that relationship. And that's what I had to do. And that's what I'm still doing. Like today, I, I didn't read my Bible because I am making this podcast episode, but I rationalized with, oh, but I'm going to read scripture with you guys, which I am. Um, still not, I don't think that's 100% right. I think I should have probably had some quiet time this morning, but I didn't. And so, you know what? I'm just a work in progress. Okay. I'm never going to come on here and tell you that I'm perfect and that I have it all figured out, but I'm trying. Um, and I do believe that when you are about to reach a breakthrough, when God's about to deliver an answered prayer or something maybe that you haven't even prayed about, but it's a blessing and it's you're about to get it, you're so close, that's when these temptations are going to come in. That's when the world is going to try to pull you away from the direction that you're going in with God. The world offers you an image of what it thinks you should want or what looks so inviting and enticing, but it's not going to lead you even anywhere close to where God will lead you. And that's what I'm learning. And I do think that happens where at the very last minute, the, the, the devil's a real thing. The enemy's a real thing. We're not going to talk about it too much right now, but it's a real thing. He's a real, he's a real thing. 
And when you're about to reach a blessing, that's when he's trying to pull you back because he doesn't want you to get the blessing. He doesn't want, because when you get that blessing, you're going to be, your testimony is going to grow. You're going to become stronger in your faith. And that's the, that's the devil's nightmare. And so he's going to try to pull you away from that. And I really think that's what I was experiencing. I don't know what my breakthrough is going to be. I don't know what blessing God's about to give me. Um, we've been having some talks, but like, I don't know. I, I won't know until it's here. But I really think that that's what was happening. The devil was really trying to pull me away. He was filling doubts in my mind. Like, who are you to have a podcast? Who are you to be talking about, you know, God on TikTok or talking about anything on TikTok for people to see? It was like filling my mind with doubts of like, who are you to do this, you know? And so I really think, I don't know what the breakthrough is, like I said, but I think it's something. And so this, me sitting down and making this episode is me fighting back. Me sitting down and trying to re revive my quiet time with God and that passion that I have with God is me fighting back. And maybe some of you need to hear that as well. Maybe there you need to fight back as well. You're feeling temptation. You're being pulled away. You're waking up on Sunday and you're like, you know, oh, I don't really want to go to church. I'll watch it online. And then all of a sudden it becomes, oh, I want to sleep in. I, don't, I won't watch it online. And that's how you get pulled away. Fight back. Fight back. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You know the right thing to do. You know the wrong thing to do. Fight back. Do what you got to do. Even if you don't want to, push, push, because that's how you're going to get your breakthrough. I promise you. And that's, I feel like what I'm trying to do as well. So I am in it. I am in it with you. And what I would do, especially when I was, every, every guy that I date, every guy that I talk to, every situation I go through, I was, let me tell you, I was, when I was in Vegas, I was praying over myself the whole time from, from the plane ride there to the plane ride home. I was praying over myself, Lord, keep me in check. Don't let me do anything that will not honor you. Don't let me lose myself. Don't let me lose my heart posture. Like I was praying over myself the whole time. Cover me. Don't let me change who I am. Don't let me stray far from you. And it's the same thing with every guy I date. I am always, I'm like, God, if this person's going to pull me away from you, take him away from me. If this is going to harm me, take it away from me. You know, I don't, I always say to him, don't let me stray far. Don't let me stray far. Keep me tucked into your side. That's a prayer that I pray often. Keep me tucked into your side. Don't let me stray far. Even if you just say that over and over again, he hears you. He will, he will, he will keep you. He will keep you. And that's why I think, you know, like every guy that hasn't been for me hasn't worked out because I'm constantly like, God, if it's not from you, I don't want it. Take it away. Um, so ask him to cover you and he will. And I want to share with you, I have four scriptures here um, that have to do with like, asking God to cover you, speaking, speak, just speak to him, like just call out to him and he will help. He will help you in these situations when you're feeling this temptation, when you're feeling far from him, because we all get to that point. And I wish people talked about it more. We all get to that point where God starts to feel a little far. It just is what it is, but it's up to you to go back and to fight, to fight back and get closer to him. So Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. You got to stand at the door and knock. You have to take the initiative. He wants you to come to him. He's there every time. Every time you stray, he's there with open arms. But he's waiting for you to come back to him. He's waiting for you to be like, God, I need you again. And then he's like, yeah, come here. But you have to go knock on his door and then he will answer. Hebrews 13, verse 5. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when he feels far, he's not that far. He's way closer than you think. He always says he's at your right side. He takes hold of your right hand and he walks before you. But you got to invite him back. Hebrews 13. Oh, I have five. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And to forsake means to turn away from. So even if you turn away from him, even if you reject him, he will never do the same thing in return. And I think that's beautiful. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. And Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's so beautiful. We can, we can dismiss God. We can pay him no mind. 
we can reject him we can act like he's not important and put things before him and no matter how far we turn away he's still there he never moves he never turns away from us he never forsakes us he is always there waiting for us to come back even when we don't deserve it even when you know we just act in ways that we shouldn't he never lose love he, he never loses love for us he never loses patience and he will let you come back every time so if you are there where i am and you can relate keep pushing through keep pushing through don't let the world pull you away from him especially you know if you're i know a lot, a lot of you are, are baby christians meaning you're like new to your faith and that's beautiful <clears throat> but that's a place where you can really feel a lot of attack and you can really feel a lot of doubt and feel being pulled back into the world fight it fight it it'll be worth it and remember i am with you i am going through the same thing i'm never going to sit here and say that i'm perfect i'm never going to say i have it all figured out because i do not at all i'm trying to figure it out just like you guys but we're in this together my dms are always open on Instagram, if you guys have questions, sometimes the questions, I do get a lot of questions and maybe I'll just compile those questions for the next um, video, for the next episode, because sometimes it, it is a lot. Some of the questions are similar. Maybe I don't have time to like answer them all or it just kind of becomes a lot. So maybe I'll compile them for uh, for an episode. Who knows? But my DMs are open. I, I see most of the messages that come through. Sometimes it's a lot, but I see most of them and I'm in this with you and our breakthroughs are coming. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're believing for is coming. God's just moving all the pieces together to bring you your blessing. So I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a little over the place, but I also feel like it was a good one. Um, Thanks for checking in with me and I will see you guys next time for episode 25. Bye guys.